Six nights a week, we find Rick Bartlett at Buck's Restaurant on Ormsby between 4th and 5th. You've been playing this gig how long? Gosh, 11 years total. Wow. Wow. <laughs> a Louisville native, grew up, went off to New York and had your, your uh, time on the big city for a while. Oh, absolutely. Times Square. Yeah. Had a great time. Loved it, really, for a while. And then 10 million people. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. And so it was a little bit much for me. And once I got a great review in the post, and it was one of those things kind of changed my life. It was like, okay, all right, they think I'm good. I'm okay. And, so you and, did that, huh? So I was, I was okay after that for some reason. So you never have to wonder, am I good enough to play the big exactly. app? Exactly. It was great. It was just, uh, you, you never know what something like that's going to do to your to you and it did it made me feel like okay yeah i don't have anything to prove anymore you know you're in a tough racket rick bartlett i know that's why i would never ever suggest somebody go into it really no never you, would i discouraged my kids mm -hmm. uh i just wouldn't because you don't know if somebody has the uh you know the staying power the uh ability to hear no yeah. constantly uh and just kind of shrug it off Mm -hmm. You can't you can't tell by looking at somebody whether they have that or not. But you knew you were going to be a performer. I did. An entertainer. I did. From I, the time you were. Well, you know, I sang uh, from the time I was about five or six. My mother played piano and sang in churches, and uh, our whole family sang. Yeah. I was the oldest, but when I was thirteen years old, I was walking down a wooded road singing top of my lungs, Jackson Five music. No kidding. And it struck me, you can make a living at this. 13. Hmm. I, I just said, you know, I didn't really think of stardom or anything like that. I thought, you can make a living at this. Yeah. I listen to the radio. I hear the quality of other singers. You can certainly make a living. Okay. And, and you are. I did. <laughs> so you went to U of L. I did. Went to University of Louisville, and boy, they taught me an awful lot. You know, from a, of course, at that point, it was all classical music, hmm. and I love classical music. I was at U of L last night uh, listening to the. Uh, the Wind Symphony. Mm -hmm. I really like classical music, but I understood that my voice was not the type of voice for opera, and that I wouldn't you be that. making my living. That's what I studied. I mean, but I knew I wouldn't be making my living doing that, and so I started doing TV and radio mm -hmm. commercials. Was kind of the first thing that really ushered me into the business. I would drive to Cincinnati three, four times a week, really? working with a jingle yeah. company there, yeah. and then I started getting into club work. And I was off to the races. I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> you were at Theater Square for the big opening. And yep. you played there for a while. Well, you know, I've been lucky to have a temperament that allows me to stay at places for a long time. A lot of entertainers are not like that. Two, three weeks, they want to move on. Mm -hmm. They want to do something else. I'm just not like that. I was at the Silbach Hotel for many years. I've been here for many years. I was on the Star of Louisville for many years. I like staying places for a long period of time. Yeah. It's just the way it is for me, uh, and it's really worked for me. I like it. Well, it seems to be a happy marriage between you and this community. I mean, you're a friend. People know you. Uh, people hail you on the street, I know. They do. They do. And, you know, again, luck. Uh, my personality is such that I enjoy people. I see people kind of as kind of as my boss, really. When uh -huh. I am entertaining, I look out at the crowd and wonder, I wonder what I can play right now mm -hmm. that the people that are sitting in front of me will go, hey, I, I like that. Mm. And so they've always kind of I've been a servant to them pretty much, uh, which again is different from many other musicians. You know, it's mm. more of an ego driven thing where, believe me, I got a big enough ego, <laughs> ego but, <laughs> but, but I really do see people as uh, my master. Mm. You know, what can I do that I think Just people think of you as a friend. They do. And they approach you easily, don't they? They really do. And, and it's like they've known me forever yeah. and ever because they've seen me out here over 30 years. Yeah. In different places. Wow, that's Rick. Looks a little older. When, He's a little different. <laughs> but that's him. And when people make special requests, what do they usually ask you for? When I first started at the Sealbach, I decided that I was going to do the American Standards. All right. And Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra. And, How can you go wrong? Uh, right. And, and what happened, well, because the place looked like that would work. Yeah. And so that's first when I started that. And, of course, everybody said, oh, you sound like Nat King Cole. And, and you know, that was it. So it was unforgettable. That's what you are. 
you know, uh -huh. unforgettable, though near or far. So, you know, that, uh -huh. that okay. started it off right there. What about Bucks? What do they ask for here? Well, unforgettable, you know, New York, New York. You know, those things are, those are standards. Start spreading the news. <laughs> I'm leaving today. And those are, you know, you're gonna always get okay. requests for those okay. songs there, exactly. And probably anniversaries. Lots, well, at Bucks particularly. Yep. Anniversaries. Okay. Birthdays. We just, uh, uh, we just did Valentine's Day, which is probably the biggest holiday for Bucks. And what was the most so requested amazing. song that night? Well, my funny Valentine. Uh, silly me. <laughs> Sweet comic Valentine. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the big one everybody wants. You really have kind of found your place, haven't you? I really have. I think it, I really do think it started, well, before the seal back. I was in rock bands. I was in soul bands. I was in the opera. But I was all over the place. I'm lucky enough to be very versatile. But I didn't have a home. I didn't, yeah. you know. But when I went to the Sealback, I heard the standards. And I said, these are great. And I said, this is going to be my, yeah. my niche. And it has worked tremendously well for me, the standards. Uh, recently, I've started to, you know, expand more to your Lionel Richie type stuff, you okay, know. Yeah. I've been alone with you inside my mind And in my dreams I've kissed your lips a thousand times So that sort of stuff really works in well with the uh, 30s and 40s standards Yeah You know, they're still standards, they're just not as old Gotcha So you get, uh, you know, it's the same Mike Buble has done that Yeah Instead of just Sinatra He'll do, you know, a Lionel Richie and so he goes back and forth, and that I thought oh, that'll work. So yeah. I started doing that sort of thing. It's always fun to visit with you. Oh, hey, I love you, buddy. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Thanks. Rick Barton, who is as comfortable as an old shoe in our hometown. Okay, here we go. Um, darling, you send me. I know that you. Send me, oh, oh, you send me.